principle number 10. Let me uh, start that by taking you to uh, my freshman year. Actually, I was in junior high, Oak Street Junior High. I read uh, the Burlington Hawkeye Gazette, as I told you, usually daily for the sports and then anything else that uh, might get to, but primarily for sports. And one particular day, this happened spring of uh, 1959, I read an AP article. Uh, it wasn't a local article, it was an AP wire service article in the Gazette. It was about an athlete at the University of Oklahoma. And why they put it in there, I'm not sure, but it made the national wire. And it went through uh, a lot of his life story. He was born here in Oklahoma. He was a three-sport uh, all-stater at Bartlesville High School. Uh, he went to the University of Oklahoma at the uh, pinnacle of uh, the uh, Bud Wilkerson era. Uh, was a part of the 47 consecutive wins that still to this day is a national collegiate record of uh, football. Uh, at that time, they played uh, both ways. So he was a defensive back on the uh, defense side uh, back, and he was a quarterback running back on the offensive side. It laid out his accolades, All-American honors, uh, the fact that he uh, had the uh, longest uh, pass interception return for a touchdown in Orange Bowl history, which still exists to this day. Um, and it went on to say he was just drafted by the San Francisco 49ers of uh, the uh, NFL and uh, as the fifth pick in the first round. Laid out some other accolades, but the very last sentence, which if you know journalism and copy, that's the airspace if you've run out of words and you need to cut it down to, that gets cut. But the last caption said that he was a member of the Church of the Nazarene. And I happened to be raised uh, uh, in the Church of the Nazarene. I read that and I thought, wow, there's two of us in this world <laughs> that love athletics and believe and faith and think that everything fits together. Cut the article out and that became my silent motivational testimony for life on goal. That was ninth grader, uh, spring of 59. Let me take you to 1960, uh, uh, fall of 1965. I'm at Iowa State University. Uh, we are coming to Oklahoma uh, to play the University of Oklahoma on Saturday night and uh, OSU on Monday night. We, uh, uh, it was the second week of January. We fly into Will Rogers uh, World Airport, and it was second week of January, as I said, 71 degrees, sun shining, daylight today. That night at 6.30, we're at the hotel, which used to be out on, uh, what's I-35 now, there in Norman. Hotel, it's 31 degrees and snowing. So the temperature dropped 40 degrees, snow came. That was my introduction to Oklahoma. And uh, that particular time, I probably was kind of questioning, you know, uh, what is this place? We play OU at the old OU Fieldhouse on uh, Saturday night. Unbeknownst to me in the crowd was uh, a student at Southern Nazarene University by the name of Danny Watkins who happened to be from my hometown. I kind of forgot about him even being down here in this area. Uh, he was in the crowd. After the game, he came up. We talked about uh, old times and back home and uh, shared that. Uh, he asked, could you get us tickets? I want to bring some other friends with me up Stillwater Monday night. Yeah, so they're up there uh, in Stillwater Monday night. We visited a little more after that game. Uh, never at one time talked about SMU or what was here or uh, the university, which I knew absolutely nothing about. Went back to Ames, 
And for whatever the reason, I started a thought process that said, you know, I don't know anything about that school down there, but I do know about my background and uh, the influence it's had on me. Maybe I ought to consider a transfer to uh, that school. It took me a few days to process that. Uh, finally got up the courage to write a letter. I didn't even know if they had intercollegiate athletics because I knew earlier in my life that they did not have, so I had no idea whether they did or not. I just wrote the letter to basketball coach, Southern Nazarene University, Bethany, Oklahoma, sent it off, kind of forgot about it. About a week and a half later, I go to my mailbox, uh, Helzer Hall, open it, there's a letter, return address, Southern Nazarene University. I open it up, and before I read any of the body of the letter, I catch the signature block, and it's signed by David Baker, head coach and athletic director at Southern Nazarene University. David Baker was the individual. I had read six years prior the article in the Burlington Hawkeye Gazette. Now, before you accept that as a just a random act in life, let me suggest to you, no, it's far more than that. David Baker went to the NFL, played three years, uh, has a NFL record to this day of four interceptions in one game against the Los Angeles Rams, had 21 in three years, which if you average that, would be an NFL record to this day, was an all-pro his rookie year, uh, got drafted by Uncle Sam in 61 uh, after the third season, went to serve two years in the military before he left though, the DeBartolo family of the 49ers said, here's a contract, we're gonna leave you to fill in the pay line, we want you to sign it when you get out of your military service, it's sitting here waiting for you to come back and you name your price. He goes, serves two years in the army, after that tour of duty is coming to an end, he gets a call from the president of Southern Nazarene University at the time saying, would you consider coming to Southern Nazarene University and start intercollegiate athletics? He turned down today what would be the multi-million dollar contract, walked to a campus, took $3,600 as his total pay in that first year, to be here and begin teaching professor in physical ed and to uh, start the intercollegiate program. On the other hand, put me, I'm in Ames, Iowa. I have everything I own to my name in a suitcase. I get $15 a month laundry money that the NCAA allowed at that time. That's my total income, $105 for the year. I don't dime to my name. Not a family could help me, they'd want to, but they couldn't. There's no way I could do that. But I had to. And I did. The rest is history. I would suggest to you that if you have the time, God has the plan. If you have the time, God has the plan. I back that up, Jeremiah 29:11. I have a plan for you, saith the Lord. It is for good and not evil, for a future and a hope. Make sure, make sure that you find that plan because ultimately that plan for you will give you life to its fullest but also life eternal. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.